I unlocked the door and there standing in front of me was a man who made my blood run cold. She was held on spying charges and fully expected to be stoned. But instead of ending her life, her experiences in that Afghan cell were to change her life forever. On the sixth day, uh, the translator, a young guy called Hamid, said to me, uh, you have a very important visitor today and you must be respectful. Please don't shout, please don't throw things. This is a very high person who is coming to visit you today. And I said, who is it? And he said, I can't say. And I said, you know, is it Mullah Omar? And, or is it Osama Bin Laden? You know, who is it? And he said, I can't say, I can't say. So off he went and about 15 minutes later, there was a knock on the door. Although I was the prisoner, I had the key because they, they gave me the key. So I unlocked the door and there standing in front of me was a man who made my blood run cold. Um, he was wearing an ivory gown that went right down to the floor, an ivory turban. He had a light brown beard and, and uh, brown eyes. And his complexion was something that uh, I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, is he wearing makeup? Because his face was shining, but the light wasn't shining on him. It was shining out of him. And I've never seen anything like this before. And if I learned later that what I was seeing was the noor on this person's face. So I'm looking at this man um, it was obvious that he was a religious cleric and I just thought I have avoided talking about religion for six days and now this is it, you know, this must be the final hurdle before I get put up against the wall and shot. So he came in and we sat down, um, he sat opposite me, the translator was next to me and he asked me what my religion was and I thought, oh, here we go. And I said, I'm a Christian. And he said, yes, but um, are you a Roman Catholic? Are you a Protestant? I said, I'm a Protestant from the Church of England. And he said, and what do you think of Islam? Well, you know, in truth, I knew nothing about Islam. The little bit of knowledge that I had gleaned was wholly incorrect as it would transpire later. So I knew nothing about Islam. And he said, what do you think of Islam? Oh, I said, it's wonderful. It's absolutely amazing, you know, and, and went off in praise of this faith that I knew nothing about. And he sat and he smiled and then uh, I stopped and he said, Islam is a beautiful religion. And I looked at him and I said, I couldn't agree more. I said, do you know, the people around here love their faith so much. I said, you'll never believe how many times a day they pray. And this is where I showed my ignorance. I said, they pray five times a day. Because when you're in prison and there's nothing to do, you count things. I counted the prayers. I had no idea that Muslims prayed five times a day. He must have thought you stupid woman, but he was far too polite to say that. And then he said, so you would like to convert? And he invited me to embrace Islam. And I just thought, oh, what am I going to say now? If I say yes, he'll say, you insincere, fickle woman, take her away and, and have her stoned. Or if I say no, he'll say, how dare you insult Islam, take her away and have her. So I'm thinking, what am I going to say? And then I just said, look, I can't make such a life-changing decision while I'm in prison, but I will 
if you release me, I will read your holy book and I will study Islam. And he just smiled. He didn't say yes or no or anything. And he got up and, and left. When I got back to London, um, it would have been easy for me to think, well, I'm not keeping my promise. But I also thought as a journalist, it was quite clear that I knew nothing about Islam. And if I was to write with any authority about people from Asia, from the Arab world, uh, from the Muslim world, if I was to write with any authority, I needed to know about Islam. Because the one thing that I came to understand very quickly through the Taliban was that Islam is not just something you pick up and put down on Friday prayers. It is a way of life. It is the way you eat, the way you sleep, the way you think, the way you pray, the way you dress, the way you, everything. It's a whole life support system. And so as a duty to myself as a journalist to be informed, as well as giving a promise to the Taliban, I started reading Islam. It was a very slow process. I didn't tell my colleagues that I was reading about Islam. It took about two years, but the journey very quickly turned from being an educational one into a spiritual one because when I started reading the Quran, it was easy. The English translation I was given was by a Yasuf Ali. And there was um, supplementary notes to all of the ayats. I also um, started to read about this man, Muhammad, the founder of Islam. And I was amazed by what I read, you know, and um, back in 2001, I had never heard of, um, never heard of him. And of course now, um, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam is a role model as contemporary, you know, um, he's a man of the 21st century as he was back in the 7th century, an incredible person. At the end of two years, I ended up embracing Islam and it wasn't a great leap of faith. I'm still praying to the same God. I just do it in a more disciplined way.